we've reached a stage now where we've started to put on some branches. We've got the sky, we've got the distance, we've got the mid-distance, and I now want to build up this foreground um, as the base for finishing the painting, putting twigs and putting shadows across. I'm going to use number 14 sable here. I'm going to use a cobalt blue. And although we're creating snow, just be careful that you just don't leave big areas of white paper. It doesn't work. And now we're going to use the side of the brush here and drag it. There's still quite a lot of water on this brush, but because I'm using the side, all the water won't come out. So drag this through here down to a pathway. Here, again, back into a blue and the same effect here. We've got a pathway that runs through here that we'll pick up later. Whilst that is drying, just take some colour off by dabbing. Don't wipe, just dab the colour off. A bit more cobalt blue. Whilst that is drying, I'm going to change the blue. I'm going to put an ultramarine into it. It's very subtly different, but it, it does actually help the painting if it's not just one flat colour. Dab off and leave little marks, leave harder marks, leave heavier marks. Add a little bit of dark into this, a mixture of ultramarine here and burnt sienna. Keep it on the bluer side and that is the edge of my pathway through here. I don't want to do too much of this at the moment. And be quite bold here by using a raw sienna, being a very translucent colour, make it watery and actually run very, very wet, watery raw sienna across some of the blues, across the pathway. Side of the brush, side of the brush drag. And because it's rough paper, what will happen, it will create its own texture. As long as you don't paint it out, keep painting out, it won't do you any good there. Just drag it and leave. What I've done now is clean out my palette. I've cleaned the water for the next stage. So with the rigger brush, I actually mix the paint with the rigger brush. The rigger brush, I believe, should be full of paint. Don't just mix the colour up and then dip it in. Actually mix the, the, the paint with the rigger brush so it is actually full of paint. I'm going to use an ultramarine and a burnt sienna and it is loaded with colour. And start now to create your twigs. Excess off. Look, flick, flick, flick. Flick, up, up, flick, flick. Don't make trees where you sort of sweep around. Don't twigs and things, they don't sweep, they're angular. Up, change, change direction. Across to here, that is raw sienna here. So what I want to do is put a bit of raw sienna on this brush, pick up the colour I've had, for these dark and carry on with this one across here. So what we're going to do, flick, flick, look, flick. This gives you the feeling of a thicker part of the branch here and as you drag off it goes thinner and creates the twig effect that you would actually see. You can see what's happening now. This branch sweeps across the pathway and creates this framed effect that I was after. What I'm doing here is, is the, the twigs, the fine bits at the very ends, hardly touching the paper here. You get lots of these, all adds to the uh, realism that you actually see. Having reached this stage, um, I'm quite mindful that there is a very hard edge here and I'd like to show you a way around getting rid of that at this stage. What we can do also um, is use a little bit of white gouache to pick up little incidentals on the tree where snow settled. Be very careful of this, but I will show you now. I'm going to switch now to my number 10 sable. And I'm going to use a little bit of white gouache. 
I'm going to pick up a little bit of raw sienna into it. Let's just add some of this on here and blend it into the edge of this tree here. Picking up the light, washing colour off and then using the side of the brush just to get rid of that hard edge. We can also use this for creating light. In there, be mindful, keep it lighter than you actually think here. Look at that there, and another little bit of light down the side of this tree here, picking up that shadow being cast across the tree, across to this tree. There's some light on here. And down this edge, across this brushful, drag it down. I'm going to add a little bit more for our sienna to that colour, a little bit more water. and create some marks and light onto this tree. This can be applied to this area up here and down to there. I'm making and suggesting marks here, here, just little incidentals across to here there, that actually I think make your painting. I'm just going to add little bits of white here you can really overdo this if you're not careful, so just be mindful. I think it's much better if you actually add the highlights in here, for example. There's a post in here, perhaps not. That will actually draw your eye in. Let's switch across here. From there, little bits up here, across to this side. Across here, I'm going to pick up a little bit more and put a white post, let's put two, in there, in there. Good idea, we'll make this into a fence. I've taken off the excess and put on a horizontal through there. Thicker paint here for the final little bits of twigs right at the end. I'm now using my number 10 here and I want to put some shadows on the trees and then finish down to this part. A mix of ultramarine and a touch of crimson. A nice purpley colour. The basic trees, raw sienna, burnt sienna, a little bit of raw sienna perhaps added to that just to kill it off a little bit. And there will be a shadow across here, cast from the light catching it, and just take it off. Again, from here, nice bold sweep, take a bit off, a little bit across here. And these little marks, because they are dark, will make the sort of light on the tree show up. making little marks with my brush here just to make sure it's loosened up sufficiently and not too tight, not too mechanical. I'm quite happy with that bit now and I'm going to switch to the foreground using predominantly burnt sienna with a touch of blue into it. Take off the excess I'm now going to just put some marks on the edge of this pathway here, then wash off the colour and then take off with my little bit of tissue. Now this is all we're doing here is defining, if you like, the edge of the path. You don't need it too detailed, but a little bit of definition will help. See how I am spreading the brush out to create texture and then using the side of the brush to make, to make marks. 
across to here. Again, don't overdo it. I think that's probably sufficient. Before we finish it, I've noticed I can see through here the marks of my initial distant hills. So what I'm going to do is just bring a bush forward to hide that by using a mixture of light red and ultramarine blue. And it actually creates another layer of um, bushes or trees. Make sure you leave some of the original colour coming through to create depth and to create texture. Dab off on the edges and there we have it. I'm now going to switch to my number 14 brush and mix up ultramarine and crimson. Keep it on the bluer side as we've said. Make enough wash here because what we're aiming to do is sweep some shadows from the trees across the path. The shadows in the distance are going to be lighter than in the foreground. So we have a shadow coming across here somewhere, across the pathway and up here. Edge there. Just take off, that's a little lighter. The shadow's now being cast down here. I'm going to deepen the colour of the paint. And just be a little careful here using the tip of the brush and the side of the brush. Now this shadow is from a tree off shot, off the painting. And what it actually does is actually makes you sort of be aware that there's other things going on rather than just what is within the border. So this shadow will come down here, hit the pathway, drop down and sweep across the pathway here. That's a shadow of branches across here. You don't need to get too detailed with it. So here, finally what I'm going to do is to hold the whole picture in, a shadow in the foreground will give the feel of holding the whole painting together. Again, another tree perhaps off shot through the bottom of the painting here, creeping up here. That can be darker because it's in the foreground. That will dry lighter, but look at the depth of colour of shadow from here to here to here. Light, medium, darker. I think having reached that stage, that does what I intended and I think I'll stop there. I'm quite happy with that painting. What I've tried to do is show you different techniques for you to go and paint with confidence. With a bit of practice, you will succeed.